Okay, every year people ask me what they should get their swimmer for Christmas, and I always tell them the same thing. Get a pair of drag socks made by Aquavolo. It's the perfect stocking stuffer for any swimmer. Honestly, there's no simpler training tool to build power in the water than a pair of drag socks. Go to aquavolo.com and use the code BRETT, B-R-E-T-T, -T, at checkout and save 10%. I'd like to introduce our newest sponsor, Swim Angelfish. Swim Angelfish is an online certification program that strengthens your teaching curriculum to serve swimmers of all abilities. Swim Angelfish will prepare you and your instructors with the skills to teach swimmers with autism, physical disabilities, anxiety, sensory and motor conditions, and more. Learn to teach skills faster and with more comfort with Swim Angelfish. Apply for an only alpha pool product scholarship and receive up to 50% off your certification. Go to swimangelfish.com today to apply. Looking to host your first swim meet or replacing an old timing system? Run a swim meet with ease from your laptop using Superior Swim Timing. You can use Superior Swim Timing with your existing equipment, or they can provide you with a complete timing solution, including deck harnesses, buttons, and starter. SST is fully compatible with HiTech and Team Unify, as well as Colorado, Dactronics, and Amiga touchpads. Go to superiorswimtiming.com to learn more and be sure to tell them I sent you. Event, heat, lane, name of swimmer, times and places. It's called Swim Nerd Live and it allows the data and times from your actual scoreboard to be broadcast and viewed in real time on any smart TV, phone or other device. There are so many things you can do with this software. A very simple and easy to use necessity for any team or facility that is live streaming their meets results. One click on any device and they're watching your swim meet live in real time. Go to swimpractice.com to learn more. And we are on Lily King. Welcome to the podcast. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm awesome. Thanks. I appreciate it. Um, listen, what's been going on in your world? I just wanted to catch up. How you been? What's going on? Yeah, I've been good. Uh, lots of lots of traveling. Kind of never uh, took a break after after Tokyo. So I'm kind of like doing my vacations on the weekends and mm. uh, just kind of traveling a little bit, doing some clinics and and other things. So it's been good. Nice. Now, why did you decide not to take a break after Tokyo? Um, mostly because we went straight into ISL. So uh, that was kind of my main motivation. Just didn't want to be out for too long before coming back, like three weeks before um, we got started for ISL. So uh, yeah, that's kind of kind of how it went. Now, I, I've had some breaststrokers on my show recently. I had Tatiana a couple of weeks ago. I actually mm -hmm. uh, spoke to Amanda Beard yesterday, which will come out um, soon. But um Amanda was talking to me about the importance of breaks. Like she needed breaks for the longevity of her career. You've mm -hmm. been in this, in this for a while now, and I'm imagine you're going to be swimming, you know, many more years. So do you feel like breaks are needed to, to help you get through the, the type of training that you do? Um, I think to some extent, yes. Um, I haven't really had a real break in like, I don't know, two or three years. So, um, yeah, wow. yeah but that's, I, I think that's just kind of how I operate. Um, I don't, I know personally, like I don't do well, um, not doing anything and not having a schedule. Mm. So like going, even if I'm just doing singles, like going to practice is like my, just my stress release. So, um, that's something I have kind of found in the last year or so that has worked really well for me. Awesome. Well, listen, um, congratulations on your career so far. It's been, uh, ridiculously amazing. <laughs> Thank um, you. just so dominant. Uh, you kind of burst onto the scene. I felt like in, in 16 and then ended up 
um, winning the 100 breast at the Olympics and and kind of just shocking the world and, and stating your presence and you've been just a force since then. Uh, how, have you, how have you felt about your career so far? Uh, it's been pretty good, I think. Um, <laughs> you know, it kind of, it, it came really easy in the beginning. Mm. Um, and I've kind of just been writing it from there. Um, and yeah, I've never really like stopped and analyzed like, oh yeah, my career's been awesome. Like, like, yeah, like, you know, I've had a, I've had a great career and I've had a lot of really great meets and, um, I feel like I'm not anywhere close to being done. So, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been pretty sweet so far. Yeah. It's been, it's been wild. I mean, I look at, I, I was reading and writing some of this stuff down to do some research for this, but like, you know, you, you dominated NCAAs, um, for four years in the 100, 200 breast, you won all four years, which is crazy. Um, you've dominated, you know, long course at world champs, Olympic games, you know, so on and so forth. And then you've also been very dominant in, in the ISL for, for the Cali Condor. So it's very rare that you get a swimmer who can kind of dominate in those three different pools, the short course yards, short course meters, long course meters. How have you managed to have kind of that, that success in, in all the different venues? Yeah, I think, um, coming into college, like before I really burst onto the international scene, um, I was much more of a long course swimmer, mm. um, at least in the hundred, my 200 hadn't quite developed yet, but at least, you know, as far as the hundred breaststroke, I was, you know, much, much better long course. Um, and then got to college and obviously, you know, your short course skills develop pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, I think it, it just all came together at the right time. And, um, I'm lucky I've been able to, to do so well in all three courses. And, uh, I think short course meters is my favorite now though. Really? So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, what's the difference then? Like, obviously the, the, technically there's, there's things that you've got to do different. I feel, I mean, I don't know, you tell me, but in the short course, it seems rushed. Like everything's got to happen quickly. You got to be in and out of movements. Obviously you got to hold your lines. You got to be great at, at pullouts, no doubt. But then when you transition into the long course, then you've got to really work on your length. Do you feel an awkwardness there for yourself? I feel more of an awkwardness between this transition from short course yards to, to long course. Mm -hmm. um, short course meters, not as much because there is more swimming. Um, mm -hmm. You know, when it comes down to it, you can't just be a good kick out swimmer and kick 15 meters. You actually have to have to swim a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, so that extra, you know, two to three strokes every 25, um, I think makes a big difference. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's one where um, long course, you know, at first always came naturally to me and, um, I definitely train, I, I would say leading up to the Olympics, I was training probably equal short course, long course. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't, it's, it's just a, it's just a different transition and, um, long course. I feel like you just have to have that racing practice where short course, it may, might come a little bit more naturally. I didn't ask the other girls this, but specifically about your pullout, there's a couple of different ways that breaststrokers like to add in their dolphin kick either at the, the top end of it or at the back end, you know, once they take their, their pull down. So can you just talk me through your um, pull out and, and walk us through that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I feel like I've never been asked just straight up, how do you do your pull out before? But yeah, <laughs> I, <know>. go. <laughs> yeah I um, so yeah, I take the dolphin before I pull down. So I'll like quick snappy dolphin and then um, big pull. Try to be as like straight arm as I can. Mm -hmm. um pretty much and then yeah just just bring the hands in real real close and tight and come up pop up and swim so um you know try not to overthink it too much but that's what i do well why well, there's obviously two ways you can do it why does that way work for you have you tried the other way yeah i did um when that was the only way to do it um and then as we the pull out kind of I feel like the pullout rules started to kind of transition while I was in high school. So um, originally, yeah, I did pull down and do the dolphin. Um, and then it turned into you could separate your hands and dolphin. So I'd, I would streamline, separate dolphin, pull down. And then it turned into the you could just streamline and dolphin and then pull down. So um, that's just kind of how my, my, my pullout has evolved with the rules. Um, mm -hmm. So that's kind of just what I've been doing for a really long time. So that's, that's what I stick to. Now, when you swim, I was pretty convinced that you look around. I went to the wrong view there. Sorry. Let's go back to that view. Um, you know, I was convinced that you look around, like you feed off the energy of the people around you. I, I even felt like you were pacing yourself off, off your competitors. Mm -hmm. But then the more I looked at you, the more I realized it, it felt like it was just part of your stroke, the way you kind of turn your head to the side a little bit. 
is is a, is there a bit of both there? Are you looking around, or is that just the way you swim? Um, there's definitely been a bit of both, but that the the head turn I didn't used to do. So if you watch the video from 2016, my head's like pretty much straight. Mm. Um, so that is something that has kind of evolved. Maybe not the best thing that has evolved of my stroke of the last you know five years, and that has come from where I swim at breaststroke practice. I'm positive this is what's happened. So. I swim in the, the, whatever the far right lane is at breaststroke practice. So my head turns to watch the people next to me finish because there's nobody on my left. So oh. my head is pretty much turning all the time, pretty much to look at Annie most of the time. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So watch, you know, to watch everybody next to me finish to see, you know, who's, who's leading at practice. So, um, I, in my head, that's the logical reason that has evolved. Um, where Ray and I are, in the process of trying to fix that a little bit because it has affected my stroke. Um, but yeah, that's just something that kind of came from my unnaturally competitive nature. All right. So you've just picked up a bad habit in practice. And yeah, <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> Those things happen. You need to move over yeah. to lane two then. And look I know I need bit. to like turn this way. <laughs> <laughs> um, when I was talking to Tatiana, uh, well, actually I was talking to her coach Rocco and um, he said that, Kayleen came into the program, you know, a few years back and Tatiana had already been there kind of similar to the way um, you were in the program and then Annie joined, but, but he said that he's completely separates those two. They can't train together. They, they don't, they don't like to work together, even though they both ended up making the final at the Olympics, yeah. they very rarely swam together, but you and Annie are different. Did you ever have any issues with Annie joining the team and, and, uh, and the practice squad? Um, not really. We, we definitely go in phases. Like I'm, I'm not going to lie to you, you know, like mm -hmm. you have the two best American breaststrokers training yeah. together every day. Things are going to get a little tense every once in a while. Sure. Um, but yeah, we, we've gone in phases where we swim every day together and we've gone in phases where we never train together. So, mm -hmm. um, usually at breaststroke practice, like our Monday and Thursday afternoons, we do try to get in lanes next to each other and race, but, um, we, we have a lot of days where Ray will write us separate things to do. Um, just because, especially like on a long course pace set or like a lactate set, like we need different things. So where I'll do something a little bit more sprint based, she'll go something a little bit more 200 based, you know, just kind of playing to our strengths. So we're not always pitted against each other. Cause I mm -hmm. think that isn't always the most constructive thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do still race a lot of practice. Right. That makes sense. I've spoken to Annie. I, I had the pleasure of coaching Annie a little bit in, mm -hmm. in college and um and and she's just taken off obviously in the last few years just incredibly but she does credit a lot of that to you and and training with you and and pacing herself against you and just watching you in practice and learning from you had, have you felt like you've gained something from Annie as well yeah absolutely um i mean before annie got there i was racing the boys every day mm -hmm. so um it's it's been so nice to have someone who is especially you know for me like I needed a 200 breaststroker to train with. Like I, I would never have gone to 19 without Annie every day. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was something that wasn't, you know, I, at some point, like I had all this motivation to like, I have to get my 200 better. Cause I have to beat Annie. Like that was, that was, you know, <laughs> how my thoughts worked in my head. And I don't think I would have, I would have had that had she not been next to me every single day. Um, so in where, you know, it, it doesn't matter how many days of the week we drive each other crazy or, or if we're getting along great, that's great. But um, yeah, we've definitely both made each other much better swimmers, much better competitors. And it's been so nice to just have a teammate like in the final heat, like I'd never had that before. So um, being able to have somebody I know and trust and know their race plan and know exactly what they're going to do, um, you know, in an Olympic final, I can't, you know, that's like the best advantage you can have. I appreciate kind of the honesty and the rawness of the answer that you just gave. A lot of people might hold that in. And to be honest with you, I felt like when you first came onto the scene, you were a lot more like that. Um, I felt like lately, and this is just a personal thing. I felt like lately you've been a little bit more reserved. Have you, have you been told to kind of pull back on your personality a bit or polish it up or like, you know, not say as <laughs> not be as honest or, you know, I don't know. It's just, it's just a personal thing that I've seen. I mean, you were very mm -hmm. raw when you came out and yeah. tell me if I'm wrong. No, um, I think I'm a little bit more reserved now. I think I'm also not, you know, 19 years old anymore. Right. Um, I've been around the block a few times. I know, I know what's going to happen if I say something wrong. Right. So, um, 
you know, and then there've been situations where maybe I don't need to be as, I don't even want to say as honest, but like Mm -hmm. situations where I don't need to be as blunt or as frustrated as I had been in the past. And, um, I think that just has come with maturity and, and realizing maybe I don't need to share every single thought that's going on inside my head, because if I were a guy, it'd be great because everybody would eat it up. Um, but since I'm a girl, people don't like it as much. So, um, I'm still like trying to be myself and trying to be outspoken and, and honest, but, um, maybe not to the point where I'm going to get in trouble for it. That's interesting. You say that if I was a guy and, but I'm a girl and you know, people have different opinions of guys and girls. Like what have you, have you felt that negativity because you are a woman? Has there been a particular type of negativity that's come to you because you have, you are a little bit outspoken. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Really? Um, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well let's, let's take Rio for example. So I come out and say, I don't want to race a cheater. Like, you know, my groundbreaking news. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I, I do get a lot of positive feedback, obviously. Um, mm-hmm. but I also get like, I remember there being some article written that was like, she's the nasty American, like she's restarting the cold war. And I was like, what, mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what the hell you guys? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of one where like, people are like, Oh my God, she's outspoken. She has opinions. That's not cool. Like she's a girl and, and they never say it, but like, if I were a guy, they would never say anything like that. So, uh, you know, it's just kind of that double standard I have to deal with. Who are these idiots? I loved it. I loved when you were <laughs> outspoken. I was like, where's that Lily King gone? I love that person. <laughs> like to me, it was awesome. Like it was like captivating. And the fact that you were a woman, it was so, it was different. Like women were just uh, usually just very reserved. Mm-hmm. Haven't, haven't seen that since kind of like a, an Amy Van Dyke and back in the ni- right, in yeah, yeah. six when she would spit in other people's lanes or whatever. But <laughs> it's like, I felt like it was amazing. But, and yeah, again, and it's not a criticism. I just felt like you've toned mm-hmm. a little bit of that back. And I'm like, man, I want some of that again, you know? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm still outspoken. I'm still going to like right. call you out if you do something wrong. But um, maybe not as, I don't even know how to phrase it. Maybe I, I, I feel like I'm just not, you know, a teenager anymore. So there, right. there are some things that, you know, you say when you're a freshman in college that you wouldn't say, you know, five, six years later. So um, right. no, it's gotcha. just, I think it's come with, with maturity and experience dealing with media and yeah. Yeah. Now, listen, uh, let's talk about the Olympics a little bit. Um, you know, you didn't qualify for the 200 final in 16, and then you, you end up, you know, finishing second in the 200 this time around. What was the difference between then and now? Uh, we really went all in for the 116. And I had only been 224 in 2016. So, um, you know, any, any other year that would not have qualified for the, for the Olympic team in the 200. It just wasn't, it was just a down year. And, Mm. um, I just happened to be the one who, who took it in the down year. So, um, yeah, I, I didn't swim as well, but I mean, it's really hard to come down from your first Olympic gold, um, and then go swim an event you're not as good at at your first international meet. So Mm. (laughs) just, uh, learning kind of how to handle, um, you know, just how to handle an eight day meet and the emotions of the Olympics and all that craziness. But, uh, also definitely like focused in training a lot more on the 200 and, um, just getting ready to swim that. And then, uh, yeah. So then (laughs) I, I swam really well, thank goodness. And, you know, ended up with that silver and, and, uh, best time by two seconds. So, uh, pretty crazy, pretty crazy, crazy week there. It was a crazy week, especially if you look at, I was, I was writing out some of your, um, swims and that trials, um, you won the hundred and Lydia got second and, and at the Olympics, she beat you. Mm-hmm. And then in the 200, Annie beat you. And then at the Olympics, you beat her. So it was like, yeah. you kind of flip-flopped <laughs> a little bit there. Yeah. Yeah. I hadn't thought about it that way, but yeah, I guess I did. Yeah. That's, that's true. <laughs> yeah. It was wild. I was like, okay, that was, that was interesting. As I was writing it out, it was, it was wild, but I guess that goes to show that, um, you know, a lot can happen in those five weeks too. Uh, you know, you, you mm-hmm. can, you know, someone can move forward. You can move, you know, I'm not saying you move backwards, but someone can move forward and you did the same thing in the 200. I mean, you, you, mm-hmm. you swam a pretty extraordinary 200, um, in particular, what, what was the game plan there for you is like, go out as hard as you can, or was there something else to it? pretty much that was it um (laughs) so you know like coming off that hundred like never in a million years would i have thought i was not gonna win that race um you know and it just happened to not be my day like i i did everything i normally do i did everything right and i got up and it wasn't there so like you know kind of like tough shit kid like 
you got to figure it out. Yeah. Um, so at that point I was like, all right, like I need to forget that happened and just move on. Cause my meet's not over. I, you know, potentially have five more races. So, um, it, it's not over. Like you got to figure it out. So, um, felt pretty good in prelims. I was shocked. I was like, really just hoping I made it back to semifinals, you know, based on how the hundred went. Um, and then the prelims felt good and semis hurt a little bit more, <laughs> um, <laughs> but, uh, I didn't sleep super well the night before. So that wasn't like too shocking to me. Um, and then came back for the final and, and told Ray, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to send it. Like, you know, I got nothing. To, I literally have nothing to lose. So might as well. Um, <laughs> and he said, he's like, well, you say you're going to go out all the time, but you don't actually <laughs> like really go out. Like I know you can go out. Um, I was like, no, today's the day I'm going to do it. So, um, and I was like a hundred percent positive Tatiana was going to catch me on the last 50. Like she had been on world record pace the whole meet for everything so um i was just kind of trying to see what i could do there and and you know ended up with the silver so it was, it was a pretty good swim that was a, a great swim incredible um it, it's pretty fascinating to see the differences in technique between you know a lot of breaststrokers but mm -hmm. specifically when you two are next to next to each other as well um is that is that difficult as a breaststroker to uh kind of stay focused on what you're good at and not get caught up in what someone else is doing and how they're doing it. I guess that could play with your mind a little bit, couldn't it? Um, I think it plays with other people's minds, but it doesn't really play with mine that much um, because I really think the strategy of racing is something that I'm really good at because um, I, I don't really swim any, especially with the 200, I don't swim a 200 the same ever. Mm. So um, the people next to me never really know what they're going to get. Right. Uh, so it doesn't, it doesn't bother me too much because for the most part, like swimmers are pretty stupid. Like they swim the, sp the same race every single time. So mm -hmm. it's pretty predictable what's going to happen. Um, so I try to take advantage of that. It's funny that you talk like that because you have a very, I mean, you can tell that you're very, very competitive, like to yeah. the extreme. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, you, there's, there's people that are competitive, but then there are you they're like, there's a small group of people like you that are just extremely competitive. Has this been something that's been, throughout your life like from from the moment you can remember i mean i'm like a race on recovery practice day so yeah uh, <laughs> but yeah i mean um my my parents were both d1 athletes my dad ran track and cross country and my mom swam and then my brother is 11 months younger than me so it was pretty much like every single thing in our house was a competition growing up with the exception of like running up the stairs that was not allowed but everything else was fair game um so whether that's cleaning your room or doing the dishes or getting your homework done or practicing the piano. Like every single thing was a race. Um, even though maybe some of it shouldn't have been a race, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I just grew up in a, in a very competitive household and that's just, that's just how we were. That, that reminded me, I, I, I talked to Ray a few months ago and he was telling me a story about you in, in terms of your competitiveness or something. I can't remember exactly what he said now, <laughs> but, but I, but there's something along the lines of, yeah, you grew up and everything was just a competition. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so what was the, what was the outcome then in, at home? Like was it just bragging rights? Yeah, pretty much. It wasn't, it was never like a big deal. It wasn't like, Oh, you get a reward. Like, mm -hmm. okay, whatever. Like, yeah, I won. See, um, <laughs> it wasn't, it wasn't like anything that was super crazy. That's just, that was just every day and it was normal. And that's all we did. Well, you went through this period where you have been extremely dominant and, and then recently there's, there's, been competition of some sort like i i can remember a few years back i was like there's no one near this girl like she is so far ahead of everybody else mm -hmm. she's so dominant there have been some people that have come up on you and and then like you said you didn't you're expecting to win the hundred and didn't win it mm -hmm. so how how do you have you managed to deal with people coming up and also uh, you know losing is that that's a yeah, difficult yeah. thing to deal with um it was something where i had to take my own advice um, for years and years, I've told kids like, they're like, well, what do you do if you're nervous? Or what do you do if you have a bad race? And I always tell the kids, I'm like, well, what's going to happen if you have a bad race? Like, who cares? Like your coach is still your coach. Your friends are still your friends and your parents still love you. So like, what's the big deal? You know, like it happens. It's just a race. So, um, it was one where I had been giving that advice for years and I was never, I never had to take it. Um, and that was kind of something that that I did and that I think helped me through it. And I'm also not really a person to dwell on things. So it's like, okay, I lost the race. Like that sucks. But now I have all this motivation for, you know, this summer and 
for the next Olympics and all these things after. So um, I wouldn't say it's like, obviously, like it's not fun losing <laughs> an Olympic final that you're expected to win, but um, you know, life happens and, and it's just something you have to deal with and, and move forward and keep working hard and getting better. What about when you're on and thing, things are clicking and, and your, your confidence is sky high? Like, uh, what can we learn from that, basically, is what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're a very confident person, and we want other swimmers to be confident people as well and believe in themselves. We talk about that with athletes all the time. So what can we learn from confidence? Like, how do you manifest that in yourself? How do you reinforce it when mm -hmm. you're leading into a, a big race where you know you've got real competition around you, but you – you feel like you're going to win this thing no matter yeah. what. Yeah. Um, my confidence comes from practice one. Mm -hmm. I know I've done every single thing I could at practice to prepare me for where, you know, whatever race it is. Mm -hmm. I know I've done everything right up until that point. Two, I trust my coaches. And three, I trust my training. Um, you know, if there's ever any point where I start doubting what Ray's giving me or what Corey's giving me, I shut those thoughts down. Cause I'm like, you know, these people are my coaches and they, they are doing everything that they can and that they think is right to prepare me for this moment. And if I start doubting it, they start doubting it. And then we get in this vicious cycle of no one really being confident in what they're doing. So um, that's something I have kind of had to relearn in the past few years. Um, and that also just, you know, gives me that confidence behind the blocks because there's no doubt. Um, I can just kind of shut those negative thoughts out and say, Hey, I've, I've literally done everything I can to prepare and let's go. And you know, nobody, nobody in the world trains like me. So, um, why would they be able to hang with me? So that's kind of, that's kind of mm. how my brain works. I love it. What about in terms of consistency and practice? Um, how is that for you? How, how do you get that, um, consistency and practice? How, how have you learned that that's important as well? Yeah. Uh, lots and lots of practice, uh, you know, kind of coming up in high school, I was not, I was not the best trainer. I wasn't. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was something I had to learn. Um, and a lot of that comes from, um, uh, my training partners mostly are, are like middle distance freestylers, right. uh, with the exception of, you know, being in breaststroke practice, which didn't come until I was in college. Um, but yeah, I, I train a lot of freestyle. I train with the, you know, with our 200, 500 freestylers and our milers and, um, being mm. able to do the other practice as well, not just like the main breaststroke sets, which took a long time for me to get good at too. Cause you know, I don't know if you've seen Ray's breaststroke practices, but they're kind of insane. <laughs> uh, but it, it just comes from doing the same thing over and over and over again and being repetitive. And if it sucks, it sucks, but like there's a way to get better every day. And um, that's something I, I take a lot of pride in. And again, I'm ridiculously competitive. So whether it's racing warm up or racing the drill set or racing the main set, like um, I'm going to do it. So um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of it. A lot of breaststrokers train a lot of IM, but you've taken more of the middle distance free route. Have you, you don't, you don't do a lot of IM. I don't, I hate doing IM. So right. <laughs> I don't, I'm kind of weird. I don't mind doing IM pace. Like if it's all separate, like I'll go 450 slide back breast free, but I don't want to put them together and do a two IM. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> but yeah, I definitely, definitely train a lot more of like middle distance freestyle um, than I would IM. And one of the things that interested me about Indiana, it seems that you do a lot of breaststroke pull. I was never really into breaststroke pull every time I would give it to breaststrokers they they didn't enjoy it why is it that Indiana you you tend to do a lot of breaststroke pull Ray's Ray thinks that the first thing to go is forearms which is true so um I I the first thing to go in a breaststroke race for me has always been my arms um mm. my legs can go forever um I'm I I'll say it, I'm a kicker and I was not completely bought into the breaststroke pull <laughs> thing you know when I first got there um but I have since like been able to develop it and develop it and now it's 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 pretty good so um it's just been something that we take a lot of pride in that we can we can pull faster and we can pull for longer and we can pull stronger so um a lot of the times like you'll see you'll see me or you know Cody or Annie or whoever in a race and we pull we pull ahead at 15 so we could be even but we always win that race to the wall and I think a lot of that is due to the fact that we do so much breaststroke pull at practice and that it just doesn't tire as easily as a lot of other people. Wow. That's, that's interesting. I like that. Now I do a lot of clinics and um, one of the first things I see is the kids have terrible streamlines mm -hmm. is, 
Is that something that you work on every day to develop, to get better at the, the little nuances of improving your, your streamline? Uh, yeah, you can work on it every day off of every single turn off of every yeah. single wall. <laughs> I mean, yeah. it's funny, like, like the, the stupid stuff your age group coach would say now I'm like, Oh yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I get it now. <laughs> so, yeah. but as far as like sitting on the pool deck and doing streamline, like, no, I'm not going to do that. Um, but yeah, I can think about it off of every turn that I do every day because that's going to be a lot more effective than just sitting and and like tweaking little things um, where I could be working on it a lot more and, and with a lot more repetition. Now, are you the type of person that likes to analyze their race and maybe uh, watch video or even the breakdown of how you splits and all that sort of stuff? Are you are you analytical like that or not? Yes and no. Um, I am. I am very much so after the meet's over. Um, mm -hmm. but during the meet, uh, not as much unless something was really good. Um, cause if it's, if it's bad, I don't want to see it. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't feel like I learned very much from watching myself take too many strokes or swimming a bad split, but I'm at the point in my career where I know, I know what that, the good races look like. And I know what the races look like that I need to learn from. So, um, I wouldn't say I always watch them, but I do, I do have a tendency to rewatch good races over and over and over again. Right. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. I'll, I like that. Um, I, I swam the 50 a long time ago and, and, I, and I traveled the world to swim the 50 and, and just, you know, try and get on podiums wherever I could. And so I was dealing with hundreds of seconds. Um, when I look at your world record, you're only hundreds of seconds off you know, a 103 swim. Mm -hmm. um, are you, are you thinking like that yourself? Like, where do I find these extra hundreds now? Or are you still feeling like you can, um, take a second off your best time? Or are you feeling like, Hey, if I could just get back to my best, that's where I want to be. Where, where's your head at with it? Right. That? Honestly, right now I'm trying to get back to my best. Um, I was one Oh four seven at trials and that was mm -hmm. the fastest I had been since I broke the world record. Right. Um, so it's one where like I, anytime I go one Oh four, I'm really happy. Um, cause that mm -hmm. just, like, <laughs> that just doesn't happen very often. Like, you know, until this year I was the only one going one Oh four. So, um, at least like in, in my era of brush strokers, right. um, pre, pre super suit. Um, but yeah, I'm just, I'm just kind of trying to get back there. That was that one of that world record, the one of four one mm. was, other than the finish it's the perfect race. I've watched it a thousand times. It's the perfect race. I've never felt better. I don't know what happened during the race. Like I totally blacked out, but like, I know I've never felt better than I did that week in Budapest. Mm. which sucks because i was 20 like <laughs> you know, like how much of my career do i have to go um but yeah it's it's one where it's like i i kind of have to chase the impossible which was that race which is kind of fun when you think yeah. about it like i have to i have to chase perfection in order in order you know to to get that world record again i mean i still have it but like you know to make it faster so um it's kind of a f it's kind of a fun game it also kind of stinks most of the time but yeah, it's, it's one where I do think I have something left and, you know, I train better than I used to. I'm stronger than I used to be. So there are things I have improved on and there are still other things I can also improve upon to to eventually maybe get to 103. That's interesting. Um, what are they then? Like you say it's the perfect race, but there's things I could still improve on. And 103 is within your grasp. It's like there. Yeah, and, yeah. And, and again, yeah, you were 20. I mean, you can swim faster right. than that. You know that. So that, what are the things you need to improve, you think? Um, I think just kind of getting back to like my sprint roots, honestly, like I, you know, like I said, I train a lot of middle distance freestyle. I do a lot mm -hmm. of 200 breaststroke work, which was, you know, preparing me for the 200 this summer. Like that, that had been the focus for so long because the hundred had just come so naturally. And now the 200 is coming more naturally, which I never thought I would say. Um, and then the hundred speed is not quite there as much. So it's, it's one where like, you know, we just kind of, I have so many more seasons to go, like you know, we, it's not like one, one thing we need to rush into. Like, yeah, it'd be great if I could go the world record next year, but if I don't, it'll be fine in two years if I go it then. So um, just kind of getting back to like my natural speed, uh, I think would be probably a good thing to, to be working on. All right. So that's a message for Ray then. You're, you're telling him you want to do more speed sets. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. More speed. Give me the speed. <laughs> um, I can see a sponsor on your chest there. Talk to me about some, talk, talk to me about some of your sponsors. Uh, this is it. <laughs> this is it. I was with Crocs last year. Um, mm -hmm. that contract I'm pretty sure has since ended, but mm -hmm. yeah, that was kind of like a, kind of like a 
dream of eight-year-old Lily was to be sponsored by Crocs. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, it was fun. They they sent me like 35 pairs of Crocs that are still to this day taking over my house. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, I've been I've been with Tear since pretty much since I graduated um, from IU, and uh, they've been great. That's all. That's all. High. That's the only suit I've worn since I since I got fast. That's what I like to say. So, uh-huh. um, yeah. So, uh, same suit, same company, same cap and goggles. Um, uh, I think I'm a pretty easy easy person to work with <laughs> for dear, I hope so. Um, but yeah, they've been, they've been great with me. Do they give you a chance to work in the development side of any suits? Um, they'll have us like test them out. Um, yeah. but like, again, I've been wearing the same suit since 2016. So, um, I, I kind of like to just stick with the Victor. Um, okay. but yeah, you know, if, if they do have a, another suit coming out soon that they want me to test out, I'll do it. I love the, uh, I love the, the American flag version that you guys had at the Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> that was super cool. Yeah. They were wild, right? Yeah. Incredible. I loved it. But, um, what else was I going to say here? Oh, uh, what about, uh, world short course championships? Are you going to that this year? I am not going. Um, I'm sticking with, with ISL for most for November and December. And, uh, um, yeah, I'm going to skip that one. Was there any particular reason? Um, just from I know like from being on the road for a month for ISL, which is something I would rather do anyway, to be honest with you. Um, and then coming back for Golden Goggles and then going back out for Short Course Worlds, like mm. I'm not I'm not really feeling it. Um, I have a lot of fun with ISL. I make good money doing ISL. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going to stick with. Yeah, I was talking to David Marsh yesterday, and and there'd been some criticism of the ISL. I think we've all seen it mm-hmm. in terms in terms of payments and stuff. David had a different perspective on it. He said, "Look, Brett, more swimmers have made more money in the last three years than they've made in the last thirty years. You know, yeah. like oh, yeah. they're, they're, swimmers are making a, a lot of money, and whether the payments are." you know, in a, in a particular time frame or not, they're still getting paid. They're still making the money and, and the ISL are, are paying out a lot of cash. So there's a lot of positivity that really is coming out of this whole ISL scenario, right? Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and, you know, luckily enough, I'm not in the situation where I'm like, I need that cash right now. Like, mm-hmm. um, and I'm, you know, very grateful to be in that scenario, but um, yeah, like there's so much good coming from it. Like, do you think, you know, like, Let's let's take like Beta Nelson and, and Coleman, mm-hmm. like for example. Like, would they be swimming if there wasn't wasn't ISL? Like, maybe, probably not. Like, they wouldn't be making enough to live on, and yeah. um, if they did continue to swim, and like, look at what good has come for those two people from ISL, mm-hmm. and and you know, so many others like them. You know, and they're obviously at the top end of the league, but like, there are a lot of teammates that I have that are doing ISL and doing well in ISL and making good money, and whether it's coming on time or not, like they're still able to have a career as a professional swimmer where, you know, before it was like, oh, okay, if you medal at the Olympics, like, yeah, you're good. You don't have to get another job. So, um, yeah. yeah, I, I really only see, only see good coming from it. Do you, and thanks for saying that. I, I agree in that sense. And again, I've been critical because I've got swimmers who I know need the money as well, you know, and, and, the, and some of them have been sitting and waiting and I'm like, these people need money. So I've, I've been vocal about it, but you know, it, it's easy to be critical, but it, you've got to have that perspective as well of looking at, at what it's done for swimming. It really has kept many, many athletes in the game for sure. When when it comes to money, is that a factor for you? Um, obviously, if you're passing up World Short Course, there's a chance to make a ton of money. So it seems like money isn't everything when it comes to your career. No, not at all. Um, and that that's something Ray and I have thought about because he's, he's like very money oriented and I do not care. Um, so yeah, I grew up with like two teacher parents, so I know that I don't need money to be happy and I don't need money to like, (laughs) you know, Mm. to like feel accomplished. So, um, yeah, it's not, it's never really been like a, Oh no, I'm missing out on making blah, 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 blah. Like I don't really care. Um, and again, I'm very lucky that I'm in that situation, but, um, yeah, it's not really, not really a motivator for me. Um, I, I like ISL because I have a lot of fun and I have a lot of fun, you know, being able to travel and train with different people and, and get to race in different countries. And, you know, it's, it's like, it's just a lot more than just the money for me. 
Well, talk to me about the team situation. I talked to Colm a little bit the other day about it, it seems like it's heating up a little bit. Like there, there's definitely some competitive juices flowing now, especially going into semifinals. When, when do you, when do you leave to compete for that? Um, I think we leave November 7th. Yeah. So in like a week or two here. Oh, um, wow. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's fun. We've, we've gotten to the place and I was, I was talking to, I can't even remember who I was talking to, but um, like, I remember when we were sitting like in the hotel in, in Indy for the very first ISL meet and like, none of us knew what was going on. We're like, okay, mm. cool. Like we're going to go race together. I guess we're all on a team now, like, you know, mm. whatever. And now, you know, even just three years later, like we have this culture and then, you know, we have, like, we hate the other teams and <laughs> it's like, it's like a, you know, like a real team. So, mm. um, it's, it's been really crazy to see that develop because they're, you know, still just a few of us who've been on the team all three years now. Um, so it's been, a, it's been a really cool thing to, to watch happen. That's awesome. Um, it, it's going to be pretty competitive. I mean, the, the top, yes. the top yes. three or four teams are, are stacked. Are you guys getting anyone in that you didn't have for the semifinals? Yeah. Yeah. So um, Haley will be coming. I don't know if I'm allowed to release that. I know when she's coming, but she will be coming for summer right, finals. Right. Okay. Um, and then, and then Eddie Wang, our tuner flyer, he's coming as well. So oh, cool. yeah, we've got okay. two of our big dogs coming back for, for semis and finals. So it should be fun. Awesome. That'll be, that'll be cool. Now in terms of your career, where do you feel like you're at? Do you feel like you're at the midpoint? Like, have you got a couple of Olympics left in you? I hope. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm, I honestly, I'm feeling since the pandemic, I'm feeling like very refreshed with swimming and, um, I'm having fun, like a lot more fun than I had when I was in college. So, um, yeah, I think the like transitioning into professional swimming was, was really good for me. Um, but yeah, definitely 2024. I mean, like, it's not really that far away at all. Um, and then I would love to, to end my career in, in the States at LA. Um, mm. I think that would just be a, an awesome experience. Um, I can't really see doing anything after 2028. <laughs> um, I think I'll be, I'll be 31 and 28. So um, that might be time for me to hang it up, but you know, I don't know. I kind of, if I'm still enjoying it and still, you know, loving swimming and hanging out with college kids every day, then why not? Um, but yeah. I don't, I don't see like a, an end point anytime soon. Nice. I love that. Um, tell me this then let's end on this. What, what gets the best out of you? How do you get the best out of Lily King in terms of when, when you really perform at your best in a competition, not so much just in practice, but at a competition, how do we get the best out of you? What does it take? Um, the most stressful scenario possible. Really? Yeah. So anytime, um, like Rio or like world championships in 17, anytime that stress is up, 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 I'm on. Wow. So when people aren't expecting me to do something, that's when I go. Um, maybe I can't, I'm trying to think of like an NCAA scenario for you, but like, um, okay. So like, for example, so my sophomore year at NCAAs, I swam the hundred, didn't swim as well as I wanted to. I was really pissed off the whole day. Um, I don't know what happened. I just woke up on the wrong side of the bed and like didn't want to <laughs> swim that day, uh, <laughs> which happens every once in a while, you know, um, kind of came back for the 200 the next day. And it was, it was me versus Kira Smith mm. and she had won um, two years before red shirted when I was a freshman. And then I won that year. And then it was kind of like that head to head battle. And everybody was kind of expecting me to lose after the hundred the day before, you know, I, I still won, but like didn't swim as well as I wanted to. Um, and that was kind of a scenario where I was just, I was just like pissed off enough mm. and, and felt that I still was somewhat of an underdog in that heat that, I, I took off and like had a really great swim. So um, yeah, anytime it's like a really stressful situation, um, whether that be on, at, you know, at an NCAA level or, you know, at the Olympics, whatever, that's usually when you see me at my best. You see, the problem with that is once you expose yourself, <laughs> once, once you, once you tell people that, especially a coach like Ray, who's, who's very, very good. So once you tell him what, what gets you going, He's going to then kind of manufacture. Has he has he ever tried to manufacture anything like that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, all the time. And he'd do it, it like for stupid things. Like he tried to do it for like a dual meet. And I was like, Ray, like, I don't care. Write a dual meet. Um, but yeah, he, he'll try to. He'll try to like dial it up on me, but yeah. It usually doesn't work. I usually have to do it myself. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. Well, listen, I've, I've really enjoyed this. Thanks for doing this. Uh, I know you're between workouts. You got to get some rest. So, 
appreciate the chat today and the catch up. Um, good luck in the semifinals. Uh, a lot of people will be watching and, um, and just good luck in the lead up to Paris as well. Okay. Well, hopefully we'll get to chat again. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Dolly. Bye.